Hi, I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Well, we're in the new place. We're all settled in. I've had major surgery. There's not much for me to do except sit around, heal, and play games. So let's get started. The Ballad of Irving. Irving. Big Fat Irving. Big Sport Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. Yeah, episode one. Shouldn't that be a repeat of the first part of the actual game then? How very exciting. Well, let's dive into it and see what we get. We'll see about that. This guy has to go down in history as the most annoying character ever. He never actually does anything. He pops in and out and makes cryptic statements, shows up in random places in the games, then disappears until the next time he shows up and tells you absolutely nothing. At least annoyances like Navi give you some information that's occasionally useful. Now these things start popping in. A couple of them grabbed Alex and then the world went blank again. And Mr. Annoying seems to want to stop him. Do I even want to know what's going on here? We blew up the thingy with Dr. Bream, we stopped him from doing whatever it was he was trying to do, and blew ourselves up in the process. Shouldn't that be the end of the story? Well, hello dog. Yes, it's me. I'd know me anywhere. Oh my god. Hey, there's Alex. Gordon. I was so worried. <laughs> hey, the gravity gun. Give it to him, dog. <laughs> there, Gordon. Dog's happy to see you. I can tell. Okay, dog. Go get the monitor set up so we can check in with my dad. He must be worried sick about us. He was so sure I wouldn't find you here. The Citadel's really coming apart. I still don't know how we got out of there. The last thing I remember is... Breen falling. A huge explosion, and then... I heard Vortigaunts. Next thing I knew, dog was digging me out of the rubble. Oh, it yeah, that's about what I remember, too. So, the Vortigaunts rescued us from the explosion and buried us under several tons of rubble. These are our helpers! That's why we need a huge mechanical mastiff to rescue us from their rescue. Anyway, Alex finds a radio nearby. Isn't that convenient? And contacts her dad. He tells her the core is getting unstable and is going to explode, and there's no time for you and her to get out of the city before it does. So, Alex gets a bright idea. There's no way to get far enough without first... Well, nothing short of a direct intervention in the core could possibly retard the reaction. You mean going in? Into the core, yes. But it's far too dangerous to consider. The chamber will be bathed in radiation. Well, you do have the hazard suit. Naturally, it involves you doing all the really nasty stuff. Thanks a bunch, Alex. Your first task is to get across this huge chasm. Brace yourself. Okay, dog, let's do it. Before I change my... Okay. Careful, hold on. Wow. What now? Oh. Hold on! Oh. 
So you start making your way to the core, whatever that is. Yeah, that would make a really interesting game, if you're a worm. No, it has something to do with what powers the whole city or something like that. You get to a place and find yet another random new enemy. bother us if we leave him alone. Okay, what's a stalker? How did they get in here? And how does Alex know what they are? The ones in there are keeping her from opening the door. Uh, why doesn't she use her sonic screwdriver? So you have to wander around the place and get your hands on one of those sticky balls that caused you so much trouble on your coastal drive in the main game. We can get through now. Apparently, anything and everything can get through those blue fields except you and Alex. We saw Combine soldiers go through them in the main game. You could shoot them through one. This thing goes through it. Why can't you get through it too? I would think it was because of the suit Gordon wears, but Alex can't get through either, and she's not wearing a fancy suit. So I don't know. Past that, you start coming to these things. Oh, I get it. We're not on Earth anymore. So those weird guys we're encountering are the Flood, right? Okay, maybe not. You wander around like a rat in a maze, which is basically what you are, and you get to this place. What was that thing? It looks like one of these. It doesn't really matter because these things are never seen, heard from, or referenced again. Alex doesn't know that, so she's a little shaken up. Further on, this happens. Part of my problem here is I can't hear a thing. The background noise is so loud, I can't tell what any of the voices are saying. About those voices in your head? Don't answer them. That's what they want. I'm not sure why, but this thing just supercharged your gravity gun again. That's good, because out of nowhere, you start meeting these guys again. Where the hell did they come from? Why are they down here in the pit of nowhere? and the whole place is falling down around their ears, so why do they care what you're doing? Why aren't they scrambling to get out of there? Farther on, you come to a bridge that's only half there. What to do, what to do. Nice thinking. Get used to doing that, because about half the game consists of shooting those silly glowing balls at various stuff. Balls, Q. You make your way onto a big elevator with a glass floor, shoot a ball into a widget, and the elevator starts to go. Uh. What just happened? This is what you get when you build your elevator floor out of freaking glass. How much alcohol went into the design of this thing? As it turns out, there is a bunch of big pieces of junk falling on you. If the least one hits the least little portion of your elevator, it'll smash the whole thing and send you plummeting down. This is called believable. The elevator stops more than once and you have to shoot more balls into random doohickeys. It's boring. The spaces you shoot the balls into are about the size of a kumquat, so it takes roughly 12,000 tries to hit some of them. Meanwhile, you're getting absolutely nowhere. Gee whiz, this is fun. I see why these games are so popular. And then we hit a nice glitch. What's going on?
Finally, I must have hit something right, or the program decided to behave. Good job. Here we go. We're really moving now. So Alex is trying to find a way into the core. The elevator's down in the core entry. Let me see if I can call it back to this level. Again, why don't you just use your sonic screwdriver? Incidentally, you'll notice in these clips that I finally turned on subtitles. I got tired of having no clue what was going on. Anywho, here's what the core looks like. Oh my god, it looks pretty far gone. I hope Dr. Kleiner was right about this. She says it looks like they're deliberately trying to make it blow up. Why? That doesn't matter now. You have to stop it. So in you go. You have to go around and turn on these thingies by firing balls into their sockets or whatever they're called. Of course the third one has a glitch, so you have to do extra stuff there. But eventually, you figure it out, the Duma Fitchet does its twang zong and all's well with the core. You head back to Alex. Gordon! You did it! The containment system's back in place. Well, that was a nice little add-on, and the task before us was a pretty daunting one, but at least we came out... While you were in there, I did some poking around in the control data. They were trying to start a chain reaction, all right. But destroying the Citadel is just a side effect. Since we took out Brain's reactor, this is the only way they have to send a transmission packet back to wherever they came from. I can't tell what the packet contains, but it's important enough that they're willing to sacrifice the whole Citadel to send it off. We need to get it back to my dad and Dr. Kleiner at the outpost right away. I've been pulling down a copy. Whatever it is, I have a feeling it's bad news for all of us. What? That's not it? Oh, come on! All things considered, I'd rather be doing this. Okay, so where are we? We had a nice couple hour add-on, we got the job done, figured out that these Combine guys are total boneheads, and saved the city for now. But there's more? The job isn't done after all? It gets worse. There's something else. It's Judith. Take a look. I'm fairly sure I've pinned down the location of the project. It's hard to say how much of it might have survived intact or whether there's anything remaining that could compromise our work if it were discovered by the Combine. We'll need to take a close look at it, of course, but I should be able to give a better opinion within a few hours. If the site is where we think it is, then it should be no more than... I'm going to cut this short. We may have been spotted. Okay, what was that? And how does it fit into our plan? Are we off to rescue Judith? We need to get this and the transmission packet to my dad. He'll know what to do with it. The packet's done copy. I've got it right here. I guess not. For now, she's forgotten. I'm sure that's a big comfort to her. Instead, you go find a train to get the hell out of Dodge. It's a stalker car. God damn the Combine. What is a stalker? Alex tells one of them she hopes he doesn't remember who he was. What's that mean? The Combine does something to people to turn them into this, but what is this? As usual, it's never explained. This is just one more random enemy they throw in to try and make it interesting. Where did these stalkers come from? Probably. I think this whole series was pulled out of somebody's goosex. In the train, Alex demonstrates why she's a scientist and not a comedian. Combine zombie? That's, that's like a, a, a zombine, right? <laughs> zombine, get it? <laughs> if I had a tomato, I'd throw it. The train starts up and Alex says it's time to relax. Let's hope the worst is over. Oh no! Not just say that. She opened her mouth! Everybody duck! Brace yourself! Jeez. 
So you're on foot now and trying to find your way to the surface. Naturally, you run into the clone guys with the head crabs, the ones Alex calls zombies. And you meet something else that shows up for no apparent reason. Ant lions here? The combines the wind speed have collapsed. So now you have to fight them, too. There's only one way to stop them. Good idea, Gordon. I wouldn't have thought you could plug up the burrow that way through some other stuff and into another parking garage. Shot. There's at least three holes here. I'm gonna need more cars. Once that's done, you do more basic gameplay. You're lucky you've got that hazard suit. This water's nasty. You take an elevator to the surface and run into a sniper. Hold up a second. We can't get through here while that sniper's covering the street. The task is to make your way across that area and get under him. There's some boxes there with grenades that you can lob up to take him out. But there's also several of these things. Alex can retask a couple of them. And as I got closer to the sniper, I decided to see if this would work. Yes! Okay, that was cool. Alex climbs up and gets the sniper rifle so she can cover you as you go to wherever it is you're trying to get to. I think she said something about a train station, but as usual, there's no way to check your current objective. So just go. She does a pretty good job of covering you. We still have random enemies that we haven't seen in any of the other games. These guys with the grenades, for example. Especially when they do this. Pass them and some soldiers, and Alex catches up with you just in time for this. These things like to pin you, too. million bucks worth of weaponry, and I've traded all back for a lousy can of rain. As quick as you deal with that and plug a couple more antlion holes, a bunch of soldiers come at you. But this time, you have a machine gun. Now I have a machine gun. Oh. More basic stuff, and you get to a room where you have to crawl through ducts again. The first path brings you to this. Oh, I'm back so soon? Excuse me, would you like to do this? Try a different way. This time we have a twist. Uh, yeah. There's a grate above you that you can use to get out, but then what? Well, there's an elevator over there, and it looks like the only way out. What was that all about? And now what? Well, there's a ladder that you get to and climb here, there, and everywhere until you come out in the room. Turn on the switch and the door opens. There you are. I thought you might have forgotten about me. Yeah, no such luck. On through more basic stuff and we suddenly meet more resistance fighters. They help you take out some combine, then bring you into their headquarters. What's the password? I'm not even gonna tell you to shut up. Come on in. Halt! What's the password? Out of my way or I'll split your head open. Close enough. Inside, we hear Dr. Kleiner talking about the aftermath of all you've done. Previously, certain protein chains important to the process of embryonic development were selectively prevented from forming. This is no longer the case. For those so inclined, now would be an excellent time for procreation. 
which is to say, in layman's terms, you should give serious consideration to doing your part for the revival of the species. Okay, everybody stop what you're doing and have sex. Right now! Come here, Alex. We have some species rebuilding to do. Destabilization of the City 17 reactor has had repercussions that were not entirely unexpected. Okay, maybe later. Farther on, we run into an old friend. Gordon! Alex? I don't believe it. How the hell did you get out of the Citadel? We're not exactly sure. So he takes you to a sky bridge and tells you which way to go, but not before he does this. Hey, Gordon, before you go, I was getting tired of carrying this around. Listen, I don't have many more of these, so try not to lose this one, okay? Gee, thanks, Barney. Really? Can I beat you to death with it now? I have the gravity gun, a machine gun, a pulse gun, grenades, a crossbow, and this genius thinks I need that. Some people are just too stupid not to survive. So you're heading off toward a train station in hopes of getting out of the city that way before everything blows up. Along the way, you have all kinds of weird stuff to do. You're trying to get through another of those power lock doors, so you have to make your way over to the switch to turn it on, then get back without getting electrocuted. It's pretty absurd, and of course there's every kind of gotcha in the way. The place is pitch black in most areas, your light lasts a very short time, and there's barnacles everywhere. Plus, you don't actually know going in that you're going to need that barrel, because if you're making your way straight over to the switch, you don't even see it. So you turn the switch on, go back along the walkway you just traversed, and it sinks and you die. You heard me right. This setup is designed to make you die for lack of information. This is just another example of how low an opinion of the players these developers have. They don't care about you. They don't care about making it fair and hence fun. They're going to screw with your head, jerk you around in every way possible, pull stuff out of their butts to throw at you even though such a thing hasn't existed before until this moment, and the public is buying it in droves. I really don't ask much. I like good controls, something we still don't have, good diversity, we do have that at least sometimes, and fair play. I haven't seen any of that yet in the two games and four add-ons that I've played. I see these people crapping in my face and then laughing about it all the way to the bank. Hey, Half-Life is a gaming institution. We can get away with anything. Let's see how gullible the public is and make a game that is impossible to get through without dying several times because we don't tell them a damn thing that they need to know and then charge a huge price for it. They'll buy it. And they do. I do not understand. When you finally get out of that place, Alex is waiting for you. Wait, what? Sorry about leaving you alone down there, Gordon. I got a bit swamped. How the hell did she get there? And why didn't she take me the same way she went? Hey Alex, remember what I said about procreating? Forget it, bitch. Before we get to the end of this whole saga, I will find a way to shoot you. Further on, you meet up with Barney again. What's the plan? I'm sending folks out in groups, and like I said before, if you can keep them safe and provide cover, we might actually stand a chance of reaching the escape trains. Sounds good. Send out the first group. Of course, no way it's that easy. You have to deal with snipers, all the combined soldiers in the universe, an armored personnel carrier, and who knows what else. In one of those TV broadcasts, we heard Dr. Kleiner say that from what he can tell, the Combine is cut off from their home world, which means no more reinforcements and no more supplies. That doesn't seem to be slowing them down, though. They still have an endless supply of everything, unlike us. Once you get the last group across the killing field, it's time to board the train. You guys coming? Go on, Barney. They're not after you. Gordon and I will draw their attention while you get the others away from here. We can grab another train once you're clear. I definitely need to shoot this chick. Why aren't we just getting on the damn train? And I love the way she says, 
Gordon and I will do this without asking you. Next time I meet up with her dad, I'm telling him to turn her over his knee and paddle her good. So you go around a corner to do God knows what while Barney and the rest of them head to safety. Thanks a bunch, Alex. You come to another of those stupid crank up doors. How slow can this thing move? Of course, Alex ducks under it, so as quick as it gets to the top... Yikes! Guess what? There's a Strider out there, and it's coming at me. I'd better get through that door. What? No friggin' way. So now what? Well, you make a convoluted path around, up some boxcars, across a walkway and all kinds of weird crap, all the while trying to keep that thing from killing you to death. You know, I do still have a rocket launcher, so let's see. Of course, it takes four shots and you have a three-shot launcher. We saw that in the main game and it's one more example of the developers telling you to go to hell they don't have to play fair with you. So you scramble up a ladder where there's more cover and more rockets. What. The. Hell. Six solid hits didn't take it down? Oh, come on. If you're going to have destructible cover, it has to be consistent. I've been standing behind this thing for half an hour and it hasn't budged. Now suddenly it gets blown away and so do I. Give me a break. So finally you take it down. I don't know how many shots it actually took. I gave up counting and just started blasting away from every possible angle. You head down the other side of this thing and guess who's there? Stop, Gordon. <laughs> You're my new hero. And exactly where were you during all that? Thanks for the help, Bimbo. You gotta love the way she volunteers me and Gordon for all this crap, then vanishes as soon as things get hairy. If I was a male chauvinist, there's lots of jokes I can make about that. Since I'm not, I won't. Jump on, Gordon. I'm right behind you. Hop on where? I guess we get on the back and go in. We don't get to ride inside, apparently, but there's a reason for it, I suppose. That's it. A big white ball catches up to us. Alex yells, Gordon! And then the credits. Once again, these guys do not know how to end a game. I think it's supposed to be a cliffhanger, but it doesn't succeed. It ends up just looking stupid. That's an appropriate ending to this thing. I do have to admit that. Unlike the add-ons to the first game, this one includes plenty of meaningless padding. I don't know why. Like the other games, it could have been good without all that. And with a little more attention to detail and things like hit detection, movement controls that do what you tell them, consistent physics, and characters that you actually want to give a hoot about, it could be fun. As it stands, it's just frustrating. 
Maybe Half-Life 2 Episode 2 will be better. There's only one way to find out. I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Well, finally, Irving got three slugs in the belly. It was right outside the Frontier Deli. <laughs> he was sitting there twirling his gun around, and Butterfingers Irving gunned himself down. <laughs> Irving. Big fat Irving. Big dum dum Irving. Big dum dum dead Irving. The 142nd fastest gun in the West. Really? Come here, Alex. We have some species rebuilding to do. That looks so pervy. <laughs>